Good morning. Welcome to St. John. Um, just one announcement this morning, but it's a very important announcement, is we have an inquirer's class starting. Uh, it'll be Thursday at 6.30, and the bulletin says Rakowski Hall, which is our basement. If you go to the door, as you enter the side door there, go down the stairs. Uh, six, Thursday at 6.30. Now, this class is for those that are curious about our faith. You know, what do these strange Lutherans believe? Uh, this class is also a pathway to a membership. If you'd like to become a member of our church, um, this, would be, this is definitely what you need to come to. And then finally, also, it's a pathway to rece start receiving the Lord's Supper with us. Um, so please, please consider uh, coming Thursday at 6.30, or if you know somebody, help us get the word out, because um, that's coming up real quick. So please, please uh, uh, let others know, and uh, hopefully there'll be a, a, a whole group of people uh, joining our church in the near future. Now turn and greet your brothers and sisters.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. We take a moment to reflect on our sin and upon God's mercy. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. in the soul of your servant. For to you, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious. Turn to me and be gracious to me. to God on high.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we implore you, let your continual pity cleanse and defend your church. And because she cannot continue in safety without your aid, preserve her evermore by your help and goodness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is from 1 Kings chapter 17. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. And now I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said. But first, make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterward, make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of flour shall not be spent, and the jug of oil shall not be empty until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did as Elijah said. And she and he and her household ate for many days. The jar of flour was not spent, neither did the jug of oil become empty according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Galatians chapters 5 and 6. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work. And then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor, for each will have to bear his own load. One who is taught the word must share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand to sing Alleluia. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Amen. 
We read it together. Jesus said, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in money. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated.
grace, mercy, and peace be to you from the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks this day for the grace that you have poured out upon us, that you gather us together in the midst of a busy, hectic, and fearful world, that we might hear again your word of grace, that with sins forgiven, we might live in this life with confidence and praise to your holy name. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we again can hear the words of Christ faithfully, and so be built up to live with you forever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Some of you will remember the old song. It's about 30 years ago, Don't Worry, Be Happy. It was a remarkable song. Bobby McFerrin would sing it, and, and it sounded like it was orchestrated with drums and other instruments all playing. But when you find out as Bobby McFerrin was capable of making his whole noise, it's all these musical instruments through his mouth. It was him and all the tracks. Don't worry, be happy. It was a huge song played everywhere. It's kind of an interesting thought, right? Don't worry. It sounds simple to say, right? And it generally is one of those things, it's saying don't worry, we find more reasons to worry. Why worry? Why not? Look around us. Look around what's happening in our world because that seems to be more than enough reason to be concerned, isn't it? We live in a rather precarious economic situation, no matter what the Dow Jones market may say. As we watch stores and chains go under that like haven't done in, in ages. It's a scary time. Why worry? Well, look around. We have without a doubt, shaky health challenges, don't we, in our time. We not only have the COVID stuff to worry about, but we have enough other things that have been a part of our world and part of our bodies that they still seem to challenge us. We have surgeries, we have weaknesses, cancers are everywhere. Well, you know what? There's a lot of reason to worry, especially when we start to figure out so much of what we eat causes so much of our problems. Why worry? Well, it seems obvious that we should. You can look and see those unsteady social challenges, right? The battle for justice balanced with, with people who simply want to complain. We, we look and we see those issues and we see the unrest that uh, probably hasn't been felt around here in, in what, since 1967 or 8? Why worry? Be happy? Sometimes it seems like there's more than enough reasons to worry. And that's just from our world. Why worry? I mean, we could begin to line up the reasons. How many of us don't worry about our children? My mother always has taught me the simple phrase, little kids, little problems, big kids, big problems. And there's a lot of wisdom in that. As we worry about our children and their lives and their futures, but we also worry about our own jobs, don't we? Because they're uneven. They're unsteady these days. And that doesn't even count those fears that we have tucked away in our hearts. Those fears, well, you know what? Th that we don't even want to express to those closest to us. Well, why worry? Well, why not? And then we have those sins that we haven't even confessed to anyone and don't even like to admit to ourselves much less to God why worry why not why worry Jesus asks the very same question why worry and then he answers it well through a series of questions why worry is not life more than food and clothing? Doesn't God give to the birds of the air all the food they need? And are you not worth more than the sparrows that get fed by God's hand day after day after day? Aren't you more valuable to God than the birds that fly around? Aren't you more important than all of those things? 
And can you add any time to your life by worry? The answer is it's no, we can't. We are more than food and clothing. We are more valuable than birds. No, we can't add time to our lives. Has not God promised to clothe and take care of you, Jesus asks? I mean, he says, look at the beauty of the fields. Here it is, a field of grass filled with lilies. Look at the gorgeous beauty that God has adorned the creation with when in a day or two that grass will simply be reaped and thrown into the fire. And if God has done that much for you, why worry? Will, God not, will not God provide more and better for you than those mere things of life? Why worry? See, that's what Jesus asks us, because he recognizes the weakness in which we live. He recognizes the struggles in which we have in our lives. Why worry, Jesus says, because your Father loves you more than you can imagine. What I love about this passage is Jesus comes and confronts our sin head on, doesn't he? Because how many of us don't worry? How many of us aren't fretting and fearful over things? And yet, the way Jesus does it is simply to remind us of the goodness and the care of our Father in heaven. So why worry? Why do we worry? I think it's very simple, I believe. I think we worry because we lose our focus. We worry because we forget who God is. We worry because we forget who we are. We, we lose our focus. Is the life not more than the body? That's the question of Jesus. But so often we forget that we are more than the body. We are more than the physical needs. Modern education as a whole has done a magnificent job because they have taught our young people and us old people alike that we are not much more than this material, not much more than the atomic realities that we are and that surround us. We are nothing more than a random coming together of, of atoms. That's what our society has taught, and we unwittingly start to buy into that. We lost our focus that we are more than what can be seen. We are more than meets the eye. For we are not a mere body, but God has made us as well to know him. The book of Ecclesiastes put it this way. God has put eternity in our hearts. What it means is this, is God has made us to know him, to see him, to understand him, to trust in him. You see, we're more than body. We're also a spirit. And when Christ gives us the Spirit, guess what? We are attuned to God as well. And don't forget that God has given us His Spirit. It comes in the gift of faith, doesn't it? That is the first fruits that we receive. We receive the Spirit, not only that we can believe, but that we might know God and to know Him better. God has given us His Spirit in Jesus so that our eyes can be turned to our Father in heaven. Our sin is forgiven. Our worry is forgiven. Our fretting is forgiven in Jesus Christ. And we get to see anew what God has given to us in this world. For what we have is our Father who art in heaven. Our Father who is a gracious and loving God. Our Father who does not seek to condemn us, but to help and to aid and to give us all good things. For we are praying to our Father who created all things. He is our God, and we are the people. Our brother is Jesus. Our brother is the one who has come to forgive us, to pay the adoption price that we might be children of God. And we share in the spirit of Jesus 
for Jesus breathed them into us as we came into faith. Do you see why this is important to remember? We lose our focus and we think we are only body, but we're more than that. Do you see why it's important? We forget who God is. He is our gracious Father, and if He gave us Jesus, will He not give us all things that are necessary? We lose our focus, and we forget who we are. For who we are are the people of God. Who we are are the children of a Father who provides all things. Who we are are the brothers and the sisters of Jesus. So why worry? Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. You see, there's our safe haven in times when worry raises its head. When we want to fret all around about all the things happening around us. When we are tempted to think that we are only body and forget that there is more going on. What our safe haven is, is to run back into Jesus. For he is the kingdom of God. He is the one through whom God rules in our lives and our world. And we go there and we find all that we need. Forgiveness of sins, yes, absolutely. But also the assurance and the comfort that we are his children and we belong to him. See, we come and we hear that word of Jesus time and time again and we realize that we are more than body for we are spirit. A spirit filled with the spirit of God. And because of that, we look toward our Father in heaven by His grace. What it means is that by God's grace, we see His hand extend to us to forgive our sins, to supply our daily bread, to lead us through the evil of this life. Those are the gifts of Jesus. And that is the blessings we live in because we are the children of God. And so Jesus calls to us, seek out the kingdom of God. Seek out my word. Live in me. And that is why we gather here, is because we all need this help time and time again. Because we so often get sway, persuaded by the world, and we forget that we are more than body. We forget that we are more than the things we own. We forget that we have been called to a much higher thing than houses and homes and clothes and food. We have been called the children of God, the brothers and sisters of Jesus. What a God we have. What a Father we have. For he gave us his only begotten Son while we were yet enemies. And now... Because he gave us his son, we are the daughters and the sons of our heavenly father. Won't he give us all things that are necessary? So why worry? We don't need to go to Bobby McFerrin. That, that would be silly. Because Jesus doesn't say, don't worry, be happy. He says, no, don't worry. For I have brought all things that you need. Why fret? Your sins are forgiven and you have now a loving Father in heaven. So don't worry. He has given us everything we need for today and tomorrow and for eternity. So why worry? Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes our understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. To God alone be all glory. Amen. We rise for the offertory.
At this time, we invite you, please, to come forward and drop your offerings in the offering plates. You may be seated. Please stand for prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God found in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Father, your love alone can calm our anxieties. We praise you this day for your love found in Christ Jesus. You have so abundantly provided for all of our needs of body and soul. And you have granted us your Holy Spirit through the word. Thank you for your gifts. Thank you for adopting us and bringing us into your family. Thank you for your King, Jesus, and his righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we ask that you'd bless this congregation, that you would increase faith and hope and love, that you'd bless all of our workers and our volunteers that your gospel might sound forth, and we ask that you'd bless the upcoming inquirer's class. This week, we especially pray for Carrie Hammonds and her family, Tina Hang and family, the Hanner family, Molly Harder and Sandra Hartunian. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, bless our homes that they would be places of your word and prayer, that you would fill us with your spirit. We ask that you bless all marriages, that they would be marked by forgiveness and love. And we ask your blessings upon the marriage of Jacob and Sarah Przinsky. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, bless our nation and all of her leaders. Bless the upcoming elections. We ask that you would guide the affairs of this world for the good of your church. We pray that there'd be peace, that you'd be with all those who protect us, especially in the midst of civil unrest, that you would give them patience and wisdom and skill to serve the community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, be with the sick and the suffering and those who are recovering from various illnesses and injuries and surgeries. We pray for little Ezra, for Doris, Margaret, Ruth, Dawn, Ron, Annalise, Ron, Jim, Nancy, 
Nancy, Debbie, and Joyce, and all those we name in our hearts. Grant them healing according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we also ask that you would comfort those who mourn, including the Gorman family, that you would set our hearts on things above and that we would look for the resurrection of the dead and of the life of the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death, and he has given us life everlasting. Therefore, with the angels and the archangels and with all the company of heaven, we now laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. It is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Now may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus strengthen you and preserve you, body and soul, to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you've refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.